Good morning, everyone. I'm making my collagen coffee. This is something I started doing once I found out I had PCOS, as well as adding in cinnamon. We're going to talk all the things, but so far, everything I've done this morning is to support my PCOS journey and reverse symptoms. I never skip my probiotic, especially now that I know I have PCOS and I'm on my way to my workout. Today is a heated sculpt class, which is basically weights and abs. Hey guys, so I just got home from my workout. We're gonna chit chat all things PCOS today, but first, oh, look at that light leak coming in. But anyway, I come home, I made a second cup of coffee, this time hot, but my second cup of coffee I bring in the shower with me because I have a couple ledges in there that I can like rest it on. It's such a like romanticize your life moment. Like I love bringing coffee in the shower. Usually iced, but today I'm feeling hot. And sometimes I'll even put a podcast on when I'm in there. I'm gonna go do all of that. And then we're gonna chit chat about all things PCOS from supplements to workouts to losing weight, like everything. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. What started this whole conversation of PCOS? Cause I've never talked about this on my channel. I actually didn't even know I had PCOS until January. So right after Christmas, after the new year, found out that I definitely had it. I personally think that I always had PCOS, even when I conceived my daughter, I think that I had it. I don't think that this is something new. It's just my lifestyle at that time, working out a lot and eating low carb actually did support my PCOS. So all the things that I should be doing now, I was just naturally doing that. The reason why we're even talking about this and how this all came up is because last year I spent a lot of time talking about my hormonal imbalance. Had no idea I had PCOS, but I knew that something was wrong. And then a couple weeks ago, I posted myself in a photo and somebody said, how do you have such a flat stomach? And then that opened up the conversation that I actually don't. I, if you Google PCOS belly, you literally gain weight in your midsection. That's exactly what happened to me. And if you go back and watch my old videos, even when I didn't know I had PCOS, one of my things I would always talk about is guys, I always gain weight in my midsection. This is like my hardest area and where I gain weight. The weight I gain is not proportionate to my body. Like I don't gain weight in my arms and in my legs. I literally just do in my belly. So I found, once I found out I had PCOS, started changing my lifestyle, started adding in different supplements. I lost five pounds like that. Now I'm, I'm down to six and I want to lose a couple more. And we're gonna get into every single category of what you need to do from diet to workout to supplements to lifestyle changes. I'm gonna go through all of them. So symptoms I was having that made me go to the doctor to find out if I had PCOS. So the first is irregular periods. I never knew when I was getting my period. And once I started tracking on my app, it's funny, my app would tell me abnormal cycle, check for PCOS. My app literally told me that. But anyway, the cycles were getting wrong, long. Like I wasn't getting a period every 30 days. It was like every 50. One time I went 60 days and another time I actually skipped a month altogether. At the same time I was getting weight and I'm somebody that I can cut myself off. My husband will say, there's cookies. If me and him make cookies, like he'll eat the whole thing. I'll eat one and feel satisfied and be like, all right, that's good. I'm also active just naturally. Like I play tennis. I go on a lot of walks with my daughter and I just feel like, okay, I just eat intuitively. Why am I gaining weight, especially in my stomach? So those were the two things. And my doctor first did a lot of blood work and everything was normal. I guess for PCOS, they always checked testosterone. That was normal. They checked thyroid. That was normal. I didn't believe him. So then he <laughs> recommended me to an endocrine doctor, which I had the best experience with. Out of all the doctors I saw, I saw holistic doctors. I saw acupuncturists, my gynecologist, my endocrine doctor. When I walked in, the first thing he said was start from the beginning. And it was just so nice to hear somebody say that because you're going through all these things and I'm telling the story fast now, but it's like months in between of like, what, what's happening? And he tested all of my thyroid panels. He tested my testosterone. He tested other hormones and said everything was normal. I was so frustrated that everything was normal because I was like, everything isn't normal. I'm gaining weight. I'm not getting my period, but I still get symptoms like I'm getting my period. Like I'd get all the annoying things of the period. Like I'd get bloated, I'd get cranky, sugar cravings like you wouldn't believe. It was just such an annoying time. Then I saw some holistic people that did help me. I will say everybody helped me, but wow. When you start out this journey of PCOS, you start going around town and going to see different people. I guess it's not their fault because they're, it's their business, but people will take your money, okay? Like I spent so much on this journey just to find out things that I could do like 
diet and lifestyle changes and I didn't need to spend as much money as I did. But anyway, it happened, we're over it now. One thing my endocrine doctor did say was reducing gluten or going gluten free will be the best thing for most people because gluten creates inflammation in the body. And apparently inflammation and PCOS are like a terrible mix. I mean, inflammation is bad for everyone, but especially for PCOS. I gave up gluten at that time too. I also reduced dairy, but I just couldn't keep up with it. It just was so hard. It was hard making different meals for my daughter and husband and me. And I was just like overwhelmed. So then we get to December, 2023. So around Christmas time. And right before the new year, I just did not get a period at all. And at that point I was so frustrated because I'm doing so many different things, going gluten free, doing all the things. I was in New York City at the time, we spent the month in New York City and I said, once I get back home to Florida, I am just going back to my doctor and saying like, I need more answers. I went to my gynecologist, got my annual done and that's when he said my right ovary looked polycystic. In that moment, I got a flashback to my very first annual that I got done when I was 16, the very first time I went to the gynecologist and she told me the same thing. She said that it looked cystic, that I could go on birth control. My mom was like, absolutely not. You can't go on birth control. It was just weird that I got that flashback in that moment when he said that and I remembered it. It's like up until then I didn't remember so anyway, at that gynecologist appointment, I still had not gotten my period. It was January, I don't know what date in January, but it was the beginning of January and I still had not gotten a period since November. I saw my acupuncturist right after that. She put in some of the needles in like the ovary area and the next couple days I got my period. So I think those two things really helped me finding answers and just like releasing stress and getting acupuncture done, I got my period. And that's also when I became a PCOS expert and started just researching every, anything I could get my hands on that was about PCOS. I was reading, I was listening to podcasts, watching TikToks, like everything PCOS. Uh, my sister-in-law actually has PCOS, so I talked on the phone with her for like an hour of like things she does that's helpful. And this is when I did all my research and changed everything around. The first thing I wanna talk about is that there are four different types of PCOS. So you wanna go to your doctor and find out exactly which one you have so that you can do lifestyle changes that will support that. I mostly know about the kind of I have, but I know that there's high testosterone and with that one you can get cystic acne and hair loss and I don't have that one. Um, I have insulin resistance. So this is irregular periods, weight gain in the midsection, insulin resistance, which I did hear all four types do have some sort of insulin resistance. With insulin resistance, you do crave a lot of sugar, which hey, it's me. And you can have actual cysts on your ovaries also made. So that's what I have. And finding that out has been helpful with going forward. So the first category we want to talk about is diet. A really helpful podcast that I want to recommend to you guys is Natalie Crawford's. I originally found her on TikTok and she's a gynecologist and she talks so much about PCOS. But one of the things she was saying is that losing weight can be really helpful for PCOS, but it doesn't have to be this big dramatic weight loss. It could be like a couple pounds or a small percentage of uh, body fat, but losing some of that fat will help you ovulate. And when you ovulate on time, have normal periods. So because I was having irregular periods, I would go to the doctor at the time that I'm supposed to ovulate and my doctor would see that my progesterone never raised. So he said that I was not ovulating and that's why I wasn't getting a regular period. But my body was trying to, so that's why I was getting all the side effects of like the bloat, the sore boobs, the sugar cravings, the crankiness, like all the, the PMS, like all of that. That's so just getting the worst things, but not my period. Diet plays a huge role with insulin resistance. So reducing gluten, simple carbs and sugar. Some people go dairy free, but for me, I found that that was just way too hard. And I've been able to have a consistent period every single month since January without going completely dairy free. Other things that are really helpful with PCOS and insulin resistance is adding in cinnamon can help your insulin and peppermint tea. Now what I do is I add in a lot more protein because things high in protein like steak, chicken, uh, fish are also naturally low in simple sugars, carbohydrates, and going back to saying that I think I've always had it, but I was able to manage it. I used to always eat a low carb diet. If you watch my channel, I always ate low carb. That's when I felt my best. 
and who knew it was actually good for my PCOS as well. What I do now is I just eat really clean during the week and then on the weekends, if I if we're having pasta, I'll have it. During the week, I do stay away from pastas and like I said. Two, the next lifestyle change you wanna make with PCOS, especially insulin resistance, is working out, specifically strength training. So lifting weights, Pilates, walking, like you wanna do slow movements because HIIT workouts, like fast, high intensity HIIT workouts can cause stress on the body. We're gonna talk more about stress later in these tips. Another thing that's really helpful is having more muscle. The more muscle you have on your body, the more fat your body will burn. When I do have sugar, the hormone insulin doesn't respond and then I store that sugar as fat and then it can affect your ovaries and your period and your weight gain in your midsection. So something that's really helpful for people with PCOS is is to have more muscles. So whenever I'm lifting weights in my hot sculpt class that I got home from today, I just keep in mind like when I'm just done and I, I don't want to do another set, I just remind myself more muscle, more fat, my body, body will burn naturally, just in resting mode, just like right now, just hanging out, my body will burn more fat and my insulin will be more stable when I have more muscle on my body. Number three, supplements and my probiotics. So let's get into this because these three things helped tremendously. So the first thing is PCOS is a hormonal imbalance. And if you're struggling with a hormonal imbalance, then you want to make sure that you're taking care of your gut microbiome and the way i take care of my gut every single day and i posted this this morning is by taking a pre and probiotic so this one this is seeds pre and probiotic and they call it the daily symbiotic it's yeah, since 2021 and i just know that it works really well for my body and it keeps me regular you just take two capsules i sometimes take it after my protein shake in the morning or sometimes i take it before they recommend that you take it on an empty stomach my gynecologist actually didn't tell me any of the other things to take that i'm going to talk about that have been helpful but one thing i'll say that he does mention every time i go to his office is to take a probiotic especially for women's health and urinary health and since i'm already having a hormonal balance with PCOS. I want to make sure that everything in my gut is at least being taken care of on that end and adding good bacteria into my system. The other thing I like about seed is it's clinically studied. So it's a 24 strain probiotic and you can actually go on their website, see the different strains and, and what they support like your gut or your skin. And before having seed in 2021, so before seed, I would get some period pimples, but ever since adding in seed, it has supported my skin so much. I rarely get pimples now. So I know it's helped a lot. So the first thing that I can recommend to you guys is taking a pre and probiotic. If you're not currently taking a probiotic and you do want to take one, I do have a discount code. It's SAMO25 and that will get you 25% off your first month supply of seed. The next supplement, I have to say I am so grateful for TikTok because I never would have known about it if it wasn't for TikTok. This is before my TikTok was hacked. Now it's hacked. I no longer have a TikTok anymore, but but before it was hacked in January, like I said, when I went down the rabbit hole of everything PCOS and just trying to research and absorb as much information as possible, this is when I found Natalie Crawford, who I talked about before. She said, my own acetal can be really helpful. So then I went down the whole rabbit hole of hearing different girls talk about myo inositol and how it can help your insulin. Here, I'll tell you what it does. Um, it promotes healthy use of insulin in the body, regulates your menstrual cycles and ovulation and healthy hormone, helps healthy ovarian function, egg quality. So I went on TikTok and I just saw a lot of girls talking about different myonistols and I ordered a couple before finding this exact brand. So I ordered one that was just like in a pill form, nothing. I don't know. I took it, didn't really feel any different. People were saying that once they take myonistol, their sugar cravings went away and that like, I don't know, I, I only took it for like a week. So who knows if it would have ended up working if I took it longer, but I, I didn't. So anyway, I found this. This is called Ovisitol and it's a powder. So basically you add this in your water and that's what you saw me do this morning. Next time I'm not going to get the packets and I'm gonna get the actual powder that you scoop. This stuff is expensive, so I'm just gonna wait till I finish it before ordering the next one. The directions say to take two packets a day, morning and evening, and the first month taking this in January, could not tell you how much it controlled my sugar cravings. I was like, 
this is amazing. Now you don't wanna take this if you don't have PCOS and if you don't have insulin resistance. My acupuncturist gave me that tip. She's all about herbs and natural stuff and you know taking things like Vitex is recommended in the PCOS world, but she told me not to take it for the PCOS that I have. So basically what I'm saying is you don't wanna mess what I've learned about hormones is it's very like finely tuned. A little bit of this hormone, a little bit of that hormone. If you have too much of this, it can change this one. So basically, if you don't have PCOS, you don't wanna start messing with things and taking things. So don't order this until you do blood work with your doctor. The first month taking this, I did not have any sugar cravings and I was excited to see what February's period was gonna look like. And so in February, I got my period in a 35 day cycle range. And then in March, I got my period in a 30 day range. So it was like just starting and then we'll see with April what it does. But it was just starting to like balance out and I can feel my body not like craving sugar and I could just feel myself feeling like myself. And then the last thing is just a quality protein powder. So this is by Just Ingredients. It's the peanut butter flavor. My favorite flavor though is the lemon, so good. Um, but the reason I even mention that is because there are so many supplements, like I said, for PCOS. You could take magnesium, you could take Vitex, you could Ionisitol, which is what I'm taking. Um, there's another one that I, I can't remember, but there's just so many different things you can take. And like my acupuncturist said, she's all about less is more and just see what each does before you take it. So the reason why I'm mentioning a protein powder that's so important is because like I said, with the diet and with the exercise, more muscle on your body is going to help you burn more fat just naturally and just help with your insulin. To build muscle, you need protein. And if you're like me and you don't get enough protein in during the day, a protein powder could be really helpful. Okay, number four, lifestyle changes. And with lifestyle changes, I have a couple sub points. So the first is fragrance free. I went fragrance free last summer when I knew I had a hormone imbalance. Didn't know it was PCOS at the time, like I mentioned, but I just, I read that it can be a hormone destructor fragrance, like a lot of fragrance, and it can mess up your hormones. So I went fragrance free last summer and I haven't looked back. Like I still use a fragrance free body wash and I don't wear perfume and I use fragrance free body lotion or just coconut oil on my body. Like I just don't, I never really looked back. I still have fragrance in my shampoo and conditioner. Haven't been able to figure out that. And I think my deodorant has a little bit of fragrance in it. But besides that, I've like cut it so dramatically in that I used to have fragrance body cream and I would wear perfume. Cleaning products, I use All Branch Basics. And for laundry detergent, absolutely just like clear, nothing in it, no dyes, no fragrance, nothing. So I like completely changed all of that. Uh, for hormones, and I know that that can be really helpful for any hormone imbalance, not just insulin resistance, PCOS, um, and I'm just sticking with it. Two is reduce stress. You're gonna hear a lot of people when they talk about PCOS tips, they always bring up the stress. Stress raises your cortisol. And so this is when we go back to the workout of the high intensity, even if you're like, well, I'm not stressed, like I like my life and I'm feeling happy and I feel very balanced and things, but I call it hidden stressors. So hidden stressors for me could be a high intensity workout class or a lack of good quality sleep. Those are like hidden ones where you're not really like thinking, maybe you don't have a lot of anxiety in the day, or maybe you're really like happy with your life, but those are two places that could be putting stress on your body that you might not be realizing. And so for me, I cannot look at screens before bed. So I'll unwind with a show. I'll make sure to go do my skincare, brush my teeth, have my peppermint tea, read. Like before bed, I just cut the screens out and I just like allow myself to go to bed at a reasonable hour and wake up at a reasonable hour. Another thing that's really helped me is acupuncture or getting a massage. Just something that can actually relax my body. Acupuncture is just one of those things that I instantly go from like, I could be feeling tense when I walk in and then I get it done and I leave like, wow. Like almost like tipsy, like just like, wow. You know what I mean? Like just, I just feel good. And then with a massage, obviously, like we all know, you feel really like, rejuvenated and feel really good. And with PCOS, all of the things play a role. I'd say something else that has been one of my biggest changes going forward that I used to do and that I stopped doing last year when my period was super irregular is working out. Like when I have a lot going on in my life, that's the first thing I drop guys. 
and now I'll never go back to that unless I'm like sick or something but like I will never just drop a workout because I'm seeing how important it is for my body and for my insulin building muscle and maintaining muscle and all of that it's so important to work out so that's just a that's just something I used to love doing and it came naturally to me and my body was really loving it and once I stopped I saw the issues I was having it like brought it to light so that's a big one for me that I have to like keep forcing myself and working on whereas somebody else it might be cutting out the sugar cutting out soda or something like that whereas for me it's like eating healthy I really enjoy cooking healthy meals I really enjoy working out I don't know why it would always be like the first that would go for me thank you guys for watching this video I hope it was really helpful and kind of explained some things it's my first video I ever talked about PCOS so keep that in mind that I'm still learning myself but these tips have been oh, so helpful happy that I finally got to like the bottom of what was going on with me so anyway have an awesome day and I'll see you guys soon bye